Hi everybody, my name is Jenny. I'm here with Senior Perspective, which is a channel that's going to give you my senior perspective on different television shows, probably mostly reality shows. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do Sister Wives. I don't know. It's a new channel. I just started it. And because of that, if you've happened to find me somehow, some way, let me know where you're from. I'm just giddy to get some comments from people who say they're from England, from Australia. Um, it just tickles me like no end because I'm just a little old lady here in Ohio. <laughs> and um, giving you my perspective on things. All right, so please like, subscribe, comment, hit the little bell. That means when I put videos on, you'll find out about them because this is not my job. This is not a monetary kind of thing. I have two other jobs that I do, so I fit this in in between. Try on Mondays to get out a video to you based on Sunday night stuff, but Mondays are also one of my busiest days. So sometimes it might be Tuesday before it comes out. So hit the bell and then you'll know anytime a video gets uploaded. And randomly I might do some of those other like Mormonism Live kind of recaps, which I still have many more of those to do because I only got not even halfway through the interview commenting on it because it's so rich with idiocy. So, okay, let's go ahead. Last night was episode 13 of Sister Wives. And let me say that it started off with the typical recap that they always do previously on Sister Wives. And they had all these strings. It was like an orchestra music in the background. You hear the cellos and violas and violins. And it's like, doo, 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 doo. it was that very, you know, like something that you would hear on Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones or something like that. And I'm like, oh, how clever, you know, just sort of that these kind of shows where there's backbiting and conniving and that kind of stuff involved that's what it reminded me of and I'm like ooh Sister Wives is taking a turn and I like it don't ask me why I like it I'm a nice lady really I am no but I like it I like good production value when I see it and I like clever editing and this show definitely has some of that. It also has some of the worst editing in the entire world. So there really is a dichotomy. I don't know if there's two different kinds of editors that are sharing this stuff as opposed to one main editor that's looking at it because sometimes it's great, sometimes it sucks. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into episode 13. All right, we are going to open this episode with the words, I kid you not, quote, I've got like 11 pages of notes here. It's the first words on the show is McKelty is pregnant. I just wanted to scream. I'm like, do not tell us McKelty is pregnant one more time. And if they would have gone into her revealing it to somebody, I just would have screamed. We know McKelty is pregnant. We know. You did a surprise announcement three times in the past two episodes. <laughs> so, not to mention, you're about a year and a half behind on getting shows out. So, those kids, they're pumped out and they're mobile at this point. So, no surprise, do not tell us again, TLC, that McKelty is pregnant. But, then they redeemed themselves and they gave us new content. So, I was pleasantly surprised. I was like almost giddy. And we were going to do a gender reveal, which I thought was just going to be at Christine's house with a few of the siblings. But no, we did it via Zoom. <gasps> yeah. So by doing it via Zoom, that means everybody was invited to come in the family. Okay. However, we learn Mary was not invited. Um, and we know that McKelty has had issues with Mary. McKelty has been... Um, forthright about the fact that um, she's uncomfortable with ways that Mary has spoken to her in the past. I don't know if she's one that's, no, I actually I think she is one that specifically claims she hasn't seen any physical abuse by Mary, but she definitely said that Mary was very difficult, that she was frightened of her growing up, and that she was very verbally abusive to her. So, no surprise, right? But we cut to Cody after he's asked why wasn't Mary there and him saying, I, I don't know. I, I thought they got along fine. I'm like, Cody, do you know anything about your family? Do you know anything about... This is 
one of the only kids that you actually have conversations with and who's willing to come over to your house and talk with you and you still have no idea that this is going on between them like he's so clueless about what anybody else thinks or feels besides himself and Robin clueless Morgan huh that's it that's all he knows or cares about so everybody else was there Garrison was not there and Christine said she was worried that Gabe and Garrison wouldn't come because they knew that Cody was going to be there and there have been issues Cody has basically said no to everything that they've proposed which is getting together for Christmas getting the family together getting together at Garrison's house for a neutral site all of that has been no 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 there's been no resolution and Cody's never reached out yet he still doesn't understand why there's conflict with the boys I, I still don't get it but to Gabe's credit Gabe did show up I mean you can show up on a zoom call and just look at the other faces and just completely ignore the fact that the one is there you can take a post-it note and stick it over the square of the person you don't want to see and then you don't see him and you can smile and participate in the rest of it so Gabe did do that okay excuse me there's probably gonna be dinging this is the third time I started re-recording because I don't know how to turn the text dinging off of my Apple computer, my mainframe computer. I know how to turn it off my laptop. I know how to turn it off of my phone. <laughs> I'm a senior, remember? Can't figure it out. So if you have an iMac at home, how do you turn off the dinging for notification? I'd love to know because this is the same computer that I do my speech therapy on and I feel bad when I'm doing therapy and my kids and I hear ding. Thing. but the Cleveland Browns won a very big game against the Ravens last night and my girls who one lives two hours away and one lives eight hours away are very excited and sending me a whole bunch of texts okay so anyway if you hear dinging I'm apologizing in advance I'm just gonna click exit on it and go on not reading them but I want you to know that I'm not ignoring you I just don't know how to turn it off so let me know comment below please do me a solid because I can really use it in the rest of my life as well all right I digress what did make me really happy about this zoom meeting well lots of things made me happy about it it was just great to see all the kids on this video so happy and Hunter was there we have not seen Hunter in a long time and Logan was there and we haven't seen Logan in a long time so I'm pretty sure that Hunter and Logan along with Leon have and um, and and Madison have all said I don't want to be filmed anymore I don't want to be part of this and Logan from a long time ago but he's the oldest so like as they got older and moved out they said you know I want nothing to do with TLC I want nothing to do with sister wives perfectly fine so it was nice because of that to see I mean Hunter looks so happy did you see how big his smile was and he's like hey sis how you feeling and seeing the kids and ch the joy in his face almost made me want to weep it was very sweet very delightful and it's so precious to see how close those kids are I really enjoyed it so the whole purpose of this Zoom call was that McKelty was doing a gender reveal. All right. So everyone gets on and everyone's all happy and giddy and all that. And then Robin in her, I can't even do it, face. Man, she can make a frown like nobody's business. I can't get my lips to even go down that low. So we have Robin. And then we have Cody. This is Cody. There's the camera. Here's Cody. Not acknowledging anybody there. Not saying hello, nothing. They both got on there and they're just shuffling around with both with frown faces. Cody refuses to make eye contact with the camera. It was so weird. And you would think this would be his opportunity. This this is his chance to be soft, be contrite be loving, be humble. Didn't see any of that. I saw a lot of clownish acting and at the beginning just 
a blatant ignoring. And this was his comment about it when they said, what was it like getting on Zoom with all of your kids? His response was, um, it was good to see everyone. That's it. Sorry. Did you think there was more? Um, it was good to see everyone. Good. Good. They're your kids. I talk to my kids about two hours every week because they're not nearby. So we Zoom to make a point of it. I make a point of it. I'm 99% of the time the one saying, although that last ding was one of my daughters asking about can we zoom tomorrow um so but usually when it comes to my son 100 percent, mom's the initiator if it wasn't for me sometimes he doesn't even respond to texts and then i send him a text saying proof of life question mark and then he's like oh sorry yep i got your other text i'm alive i'm here and then i'm like zoom call this weekend so i can see your face because anybody could be texting back i need a proof of life video <laughs> because he's a boy he's not going to get on the phone and talk to me but a FaceTime he'll do okay at any rate I'm the mother I'm the mother so I take the initiative say I love you let's get together okay I have so much to say about this I'm doing a separate video there's an entire section of last week's episode that I forgot to talk about I don't know if I didn't have notes on it or what but like I I, I how did I come across it? I don't remember how I came across it, but all of a sudden I realized I had this whole, I had videoed part of it to show and talk about, and I just dropped the ball, people. So I'm going to do a whole separate video just on that, which is about um, Cody's communication with his kids, let's say. All right. So Cody finally gets the opportunity to see his kids, to be dad and all that and his response to how he felt about being with his kids was it was good to see everyone we're running a little late but they're going to be here soon um it was fun to see everybody deadpan too let me tell you there wasn't a smile there wasn't it was good to see everyone no it was um it was good to see everyone and just keep staring okay so one by one more kids come on to zoom Cody's not looking at any of them Robin does smile so that was nice we turned that frown upside down so that made me happy to see for the benefit of the kids but most of the kids don't care and they don't really want to be in connection with her Cody keeps frowning he seems disinterested and his response to how he feels seeing his kids again was I was nervous I found that such an odd emotion with your own children I I have never been nervous around my kids maybe I was slightly nervous the first time meeting um, my the in-laws my daughter's husband's parents but I was never nervous around her like my kids are my most sacred comfort zone of anything I'm more comfortable with my kids than any friends that I have or probably even my husband <laughs> honestly I don't you know I don't know I'm their parent of course I'm so comfortable with them so I found that very odd and it kind of revealing in that he really doesn't have a parental nurturing kind of relationship with them he now just sees them as adults, not relatives, and adults who have dishonored him. And so he's cut them off. And so now he's nervous being around them because he misbehaved and he has no ability to understand or comprehend how to apologize. Cody adds, quote, I haven't had a positive experience with some of my children. So this is why he's nervous. I haven't had a positive experience with some of my children. Yeah. That's the understatement of the year. Okay, well, first of all, let's be clear. You haven't had a positive experience with most of your children, Cody. Not some of your children. So now we cut to Cody all of a sudden deciding he's going to engage with 
the video chat. And he obviously sees his grand um, daughter there. And he does this. <sighs> Which is, I don't know why it creeps me out. I can't understand why it creeps me out. I'm thinking it's because it's the exact same smile he did when he said, I hope everyone has a nice Thanksgiving. That was like, that was like chills up my spine. Kind of like, ooh, you have a level of evil in you just that kind of stab knowing that no one's getting together and he's like I hope you all have a nice Thanksgiving it was that kind of like kind of creepy smile but then all these like little fingers that are like getting close in the camera shouldn't have bothered me he's trying I guess but he's over trying it's like overacting I, I, I just think everybody can see through it Everybody but McKelty. Bless her heart. Clueless as could be. We'll get to that. There's one cut to Aurora's kids in a confessional situation. Now, uh, Brianna says nothing. She just sits there with her. her she has the same uh, sad face that um, her mother has. And she just stared down with the sad face. She didn't say anything. Aurora spoke. And... It was just painful to listen to because Aurora's so misguided that it like hurt to hear these words, but I wrote it down, so let me read it to you. She said, I want I want to speak on behalf of my mother and all of the efforts she's made. No matter what anyone believes or feels, the truth is she's been one of the biggest, if not the biggest, cheerleader for the good healthy relationships and correspondence between dad and the kids and dad and the other wives end quote okay let me just step aside a second and say this was well spoken <laughs> she doesn't speak like her mom or dad so kudos to aurora because they're raised in a family of people who have lots of fillers in their speech and who use words that don't mean the right things and who just ramble and circumvent and that's a speech therapy term like go round and round and say words that don't mean anything and or have tangential speech where you is going off another speech therapy term you go off onto a tangent start talking about something else because that is what happens in her household I found it amazing that she just off the cuff said something that was coherent made sense and was well spoken and she didn't sound like her mom or dad at all when she said this but what she said that's what made me sad because she's so wrong so she clearly isn't watching the shows yet she clearly knows that people don't like her mom you know what it's her mom of course she's going to have her mom's back. She doesn't know much else. She has been kept in that house and under her mom's guide. I mean, we saw when they were climbing rocks and all the kids were having fun and Robin kept yelling to her kids, no, get down, get down, get down. And everyone was kind of laughing at Robin going, they're fine. They're just climbing up to the top to see the view. No, it's dangerous. Get down. I mean, she's very, very, very overprotective of the kids and then as soon as 2020 hit boom those kids have been in lockdown in her house for two years during these formative social years of their lives as teenagers so what did they have they have their mom of course they're gonna be loyal to their mom they're gonna love their mom there's a lot of people who are raised in families with worse moms and dads than Cody and Robin and they still love their moms they may not want to spend time with them they may put boundaries but it deep down inside they still love them because it's mom okay so I I understand where she's coming from I understand that she thinks her mom is a hundred percent right and that everybody else is wrong but she just doesn't have all the information no nope. she's relying on very little Intel <laughs> and making her judgment based on that and of course she's getting fed in her ears from both her mom and her dad 
how bad everybody else is, how wrong everybody else is, how much they've wronged them, how they don't like her kids. I mean, all this stuff that they say in these confessionals that you think, are you saying this in your household? Well, clearly, clearly they are saying this, which is very sad that they're manipulate, manipulating their children in this way. But, oof, talk about missing the boat. No matter what anyone else says or believes, the truth is she's been one of the biggest, if not the biggest, cheerleader for the good, healthy relationships and correspondence between dad and the kids and dad and the other wives. I just, I can't even. We sat there watching Cody say, can we have Mary come over um, during COVID? She's following all the COVID rules. Oh, no, no, we can't do that. We see the next year, can we have people over for Christmas? No, 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 I don't think that's a good idea. Can we have Mary wants to invite the whole family over for this past Christmas at her house? No, 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 I think there's going to be fighting. I don't think that's a good idea. Then the question was posed to her, what do you think about a family reunion someplace? She said, I don't think that's a good idea. No, there's going to be too much fighting. She has said no, 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 no about getting the family together. She was the one in the text chain who put an end to the gift exchange and having her kids participate. Mommy came in and put an end to it and said, my kids won't be participating. This isn't a safe place. I don't understand how this gets twisted, but somehow magically Robin is able to twist the situation so that Aurora believes she's the biggest cheerleader for trying to get the kids together with Cody and everybody else. All I see is her saying no, 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 no to every opportunity to have Cody get together with them. And that's what we see on camera. You know they put their best foot forward on camera. The stuff that happens behind the scenes is really the best stuff, but we're not privy to it. I do want to point out that she said, okay, my mom is the one that wants my dad to have a good relationship with the kids and with the wives. I think right now this might be true, but it's too little too late. It's too many years of putting a wedge between them. And Cody's bought it hook, line, and sinker and thinks his kids are rotten people and that everyone's against him and Robin. So now that Robin's seeing it's all falling apart, the show might not exist anymore because there are no sister wives. <laughs> They're all leaving. She was hanging on to Mary. She was she, with a choke chain. She had Mary still there. So there's a sister wives show. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. And in this season, Mary's breaking free of that. So Robin's got nothing left. So the money from TLC, the hundreds of thousands of dollars are getting every year from TLC, there's a likelihood of poof, it's gone. And the money in the pot that all the sister wives contribute to, all the sister wives except for Robin because Robin's the only one that has never worked in this family. So all the money that gets put into this pot, poof, it's gone. Each mom gets to keep their own money now. I'm telling you, TLC, keep sister wives going and have it be Janelle and Christine because they really are still sister wives. And I would love to follow their family and I would love to follow the kids. And maybe the kids would be open to it if it's not about the conflict with their dad and Robin. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent. This is going to end up being an hour-long video. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try to go quicker now. I have so many rants. I'm, I apologize. I apologize. Okay. So we cut back to McKelty and Tony, who in their interview, McKelty is as clueless as ever. And she says, I think it says something that they're still willing to get together for big life stuff. Commenting on the fact that um, Cody and Robin and the other moms and all the kids are willing to get onto this Zoom thing um, for this gender reveal. Actually, that was, I think, a direct quote of Tony in response to McKelty talking about the fact that everyone got together. But for him saying, oh, I think, it's, I think it says something that everybody's willing to get together. No, it doesn't say anything. It doesn't say anything. Cody came right out in his confessional 
and said and said it doesn't say anything we cut to McKelty who says I think that like in the future wouldn't it be so lovely if we could all get together in person and wouldn't it be great together if the whole family got together again and that's my wish and everything but here's Cody's response to why he is joining this zoom I'm just going in um like this is about Tony McKelty and and babies you know this is a reason Cody's on the zoom call not to get together with all his other kids, not to see everyone again, not to make amends, not to try to get the whole family together again, like he claims he wants. Instead, his only reason for being on the Zoom call is, I am just going in like, um, this is about Tony and McKelty and babies, you know? End quote. <sighs> well spoken, Cody, well spoken. Oh, Lord. So no, Tony and McKelty, this video thing is because McKelty thinks she's the bridge. And she's not the bridge. The bridge is not happening. There's still this side, there's this side, and McKelty's in the middle. McKelty goes this way, McKelty goes this way. But she's not a bridge. Nobody's crossing over either way. It's just McKelty in the middle, Robin and her family, the whole rest of the family over here. That's what it is. And because it's McKelty who's doing the gender reveal, these people want to see the gender reveal. These people want to see the gender reveal. They're both there for McKelty. They're not there for a reconciliation. There was no comment made by anybody to the other side. It was just on McKelty, which is great. I'm glad they all got together for McKelty. But the next time there's a baby, if Madison has another baby and she does a gender reveal, it's going to be Janelle and Christine's families who are on the gender reveal call. She's not inviting Cody and she's not inviting Robin. But don't you find it interesting that Robin's kids were not on the call? Wait, what? what? Because McKelty doesn't have any beef with Robin's kids. So why were Robin's kids not on this call? I want to know. I think Robin wouldn't allow it. That's what I think. I think she, her little tender soul children might get hurt seeing the other kids. And maybe they might even say something negative towards them. Of course, they wouldn't say anything. I don't think she let them on. Because none of them were on? No. Solomon and Ari 100% would have wanted to be on that call, and they would have wanted to see their other siblings. They would have wanted to see Truly. They would have wanted to see McKelty, and they would have wanted to know about the gender reveal. So that was a big miss on Robin's part, and I hope TLC follows up with some questions they didn't on this episode address that at all. All they addressed was the fact that Mary was not invited. And that was it. And I'm like, hello, what about the other five kids? Robin's kids, where are they? Where are the kids? Cody goes into victim mode right after saying, he says that the video chat that they had and the gender reveal was bittersweet. And then he said it was mostly sweet. Yay on Cody. I'm giving him kudos there. Kudos for Cody. He said it was mostly sweet, but then he goes on to be a victim. <sighs> Shocker. He said... But I started out being almost in a state of paranoia with anxiety over the contempt that has been thrown my direction. I, you know what? Here we go again, Cody. Honest to goodness. He has a distorted, warped view of his relationship with his kids, refuses to do anything to make amends with it, but continues to play the victim. Still, he's learned nothing, nothing. Slow learner, it's true. But I love that there was a sweet moment in the middle of it, which is when Madison said, did you hear what Evie said? Evie said, my cousin Avalon. And then you could hear her voice going, my cousin Avalon, so Evie, recognized Avalon right away in there so clearly for them to be that young and to recognize the other one the other siblings they are close still 
they must FaceTime, they must send photos, they, maybe they get together, I don't know, because uh, Madison lives all the way in North Carolina on the other side of the country from them. But that was so sweet to see that not only are the kids maintaining relationships, but their kids are becoming friends with each other. And I will say there was a little stick it to Cody and Robin there in that the kids and the grandkids are still connected and bonded. I know that Robin likes to stake claim to McKelty's daughter, Avalon, and say, oh, I just love her so much and they love us and everything. But, you know, watching the video, watching Christine and Avalon hugging and kissing in it, and then the kids recognizing each other, I mean, that had it been like, see what happens when you don't separate yourself from the rest of us because we continue to do things and you were so angry that we continued to get together as a family you were so angry over this COVID situation and yet this is a result when family gets together they bond and they solidify and they become stronger and let me just say as a side note right now I haven't done a video on this and I don't, I, I don't know maybe I will there's not a whole lot involved with it but in an interview that Madison really recently did the interviewer asked Madison like how much she's connected to Cody or something like that and um, Madison's response was that her kids would not you know does Cody reach out and all that and the answer was no and she said that she doesn't reach out either there was something there where she implied that there were some emotional outbursts that she didn't want around her kids so fair I don't know if it was her personal experience with her father or if something happened after, um, well, not Evie, the older one. I can't think of his name. He would have been born first. But at any rate, I don't know what precipitated all of it. But Madison did say that her kids would not even recognize Cody. And sure enough, here we are in the Zoom call, and none of her kids are like, Grandpa, you know, or even Cody. <laughs> nothing it was Evie my cousin Evie so oh so sweet and I mean it's not that I want to see people in pain I really don't but Cody's getting what he deserves and I'm thinking hopefully he's learning from it he doesn't appear to be it's been many years and he hasn't learned yet but maybe seeing them connected I don't know it's probably just gonna plant a bigger seed of bitterness inside his heart and he's gonna make a bigger divide and he's gonna become an even larger victim Janelle in the interview said that it would be nice if this kind of get together like they did on zoom that they would be able to do in person again one day and then Christine in the interview said yeah I not for a long time do I want to get together with people um, she said you know maybe but n not yet can I just point out these two women have completely flip-flopped it was only a couple episodes ago where they were sitting in the basement of that really large three-level Airbnb that Christine had for a week somewhere around the Flagstaff area and in the basement Janelle and Christine were sipping their tea and chit-chatting and at that time, Janelle said, I want nothing to do with getting together with the rest of the family. I'm okay. I'm fine. And Christine was saying, well, I was thinking it would be nice if we had a family reunion. Like, we don't really have to talk to people we don't want to talk to, but everybody could get together. The kids could get together. And then Janelle's like, mm, yeah, I, I guess so. I guess she's been thinking about it a lot and really getting on board because now all of a sudden in this episode, again, we have zero knowledge of timeline. There's an implication that it's possibly 10 months later, this. Actually, McKelty's belly is quite large, so it probably is 10 months later. So we're 10 months later, Janelle's had 10 months to mull it over, and she's now on board, and something happened in that 10-month period of time that made Christine go from, let's all get together, to, mm, yeah, I'm not ready for it. Maybe someday, but I can't I can't see that now. I can't. I just don't want to go there. Don't know why. Don't know why. Flip-floppers don't know why, but, I mean, I love Christine, and I love Janelle, but I need to point out with them if they say something that's inconsistent as well, because I don't want this just to be a Cody bashing session and a Robin bashing 
bashing session, although they deserve it. If they flip-flopped on something they said, I 100% would point it out. So I need to point it out. I don't know. They've completely changed positions. In the interview, we have Cody trying to reconcile the idea still that the family's not together and he still thinks it's because of Robin and the kids not wanting to be around Robin and maybe that's a big part of it you know we don't really know but he says Robin and I are gonna be like this (laughs) you can't separate us and then he says they want their dad but they don't want Robin that's not going to work. Robin and I are going to be like this and we're going to work this out and that's just the relationship we're going to be in. Okay, he ended the sentence with a preposition that really bothered me. (laughs) I'm just throwing it out there and we're just going to leave it at that. It's fine. Many people do it. But a speech therapist don't end sentences with prepositions. Okay, but I just have to say, I wrote down when I was writing down what he was saying, I wrote in a big circle next to it, why why he says they don't they want their dad but they don't want Robin that's not gonna work why why you are their father no matter what it is your responsibility to nurture this relationship you brought in after they were all in their teenage years another wife And their own moms could see the strife that this other wife caused. And then she overtly caused a lot more strife that they could see because they were not dumb. They were teenagers already at the time. The point is that he is so obsessed with Robin that he can't see the forest for the trees. He will cut himself off from his children to have this relationship with Robin. He refuses, and you know what? He doesn't have to end his relationship with Robin. He can just say, okay, let's go have dinner. Let's go do that. I mean, Savannah doesn't do anything with Robin, and that still works, but he has different standards for different kids, and the strongest and hardest standards are for those that are his boys. We cut to marriage in her carriage house again, talking about the renovation. Boring! (laughs) Honestly. She said that eventually she's going to also, Lulu Rose, something that you sell um, online, but she might have a shop there where people can come in and shop. And I'm like, you're in Parowan, not Atlantic City, or Los Angeles, or Chicago, or Cincinnati, or Cleveland, or Detroit, or any semi-large city. You're in a very tiny little town called Parowan, which nobody in the world has ever heard of before Sister Wives. So how it's going to become a store, it makes no sense to me. The Airbnb is in Parowan too. I get that. It's a destination location. And meet Jen. And or meet Mary. I'm 100% in support of that. But people stopping by her carriage house to buy a pair of leggings that she maybe makes $10 profit on. I mean, somebody spends the weekend, she probably profits about three to $500 on each person. That's a lot of leggings and shirts. I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. But if you look at the pictures around when they did the aerial view, Um, Even from looking in the front of the carriage house, behind the fence, you can see it's all dirt and rubble and construction and boards that are laying around. And the aerial view of it, it was like a ghost town. There was nobody around. The house next to it had a small bus parked in it, which means it's probably not a functioning bus. It's like got so old and then somebody bought it to use it to haul stuff and that. So it's a school bus, you know, like a short school bus that is in the parking lot or in the driveway next door. Not exactly the metropolis that you need to sell a lot of leggings. Just saying. So Mary does some of her reflection again on her eternal marriage and trying to work through it in her mind. She says that um, 
by Cody saying that he doesn't want anything to do with her, he's already broken their covenant. So is the covenant even good anymore? Good question. Good question, Mary. These are good questions that you're pondering. And then she says, quote, to be eternally bound to somebody who doesn't even want me, which is what we've all been thinking, who wants to spend eternity with Cody? Oh my goodness. I don't even know how you survived this this life with him, but eternity with him? My goodness. Somebody for her who's come out and said, I don't want anything to do with you. You want to spend eternity with him? And she says it for the first time she says it. She says to be eternally bound to someone who doesn't want me. Um, and then I'm just like, yes, Mary, yes. And then she says, it's a lot to consider. <laughs> We're not there yet. We're not there yet. I thought for sure she'd say, why would I want that? Who would want that? There's got to be somebody who wants to be with me. And that might make a better person to spend eternity with since my faith says that who you're married to, you will spend eternity with as well. We cut to a big meal at Christine's house with all her kids there. Um, they were all in town. She said Isabel's getting ready to go back to North Carolina to start school again. She was home for the whole summer, so that's why we've seen her in a bunch of episodes. I had said in a previous one, I don't know if she flew in for the weekend or what's going on. She was at Christine's for the entire summer, which is really nice. And uh, somebody asked Isabel at the table if she would ever come back, and she said, yeah, yeah, because I don't really have any family in North Carolina besides Madison and her immediate family. Family and and she loves Madison and Madison she gets along with Madison really well and again remember Madison is Janelle's daughter not Christine's daughter so I love how they're very very close um, but she said that she probably would want to move back to Utah Christine's excited at the notion that she might uh, be moving back to Utah as soon as she graduates from college that's cute and then we cut to Tony and McKelty being inappropriate again I Tony does a lot of sexual inappropriate jokes. McKelty just says what's on her mind and doesn't have a filter and doesn't know what's appropriate to say out loud and what thoughts need to be kept inside her head. So the two of them together make an interesting combination. To be a fly on the wall of their conversations in their house would be interesting. But I don't want a reality series on them. Honestly, I wouldn't watch it. I'm not going to recap it. If they somebody said that they're looking into doing a reality series of the two of them, and that's why the two of them are being interviewed so much, don't. Too frustrating. I couldn't do it. Too frustrating. These little clips of her are enough. No, no. Christine and Janelle and their families, and they can be a part of it. Okay. But a spinoff of just Tony and McKelty? Uh-uh. I can't. I can't. The kids start discussing Christine's dating life. Basically, Tony and McKelty start dating Chris, uh, discussing Christine's dating life. McKelty makes the comment, "You need to get acquaint. You need to date because you need to get acquainted with your body." I just wanted to like crawl in a hole. Maybe it's because I'm old. Maybe I'm in the senior realm. Maybe that's why. But she said that to her mother. I. You need to get in. Okay. Maybe Christine is very acquainted with her body. Thank you, McKelty. And you don't need a man to do that. Just saying. And then Tony goes on to say, yeah, it takes practice. It takes practice. Oh, Tony. I'm not going to say any more. I'm just leaving it out there. Comment, if you will. There's a road trip with Christine and Janelle. So cute. Love that they're doing a road trip together. This is probably going to be the one thing that Cody's the most jealous of because he loves his road trips. <laughs> when he watches the episode and sees a Christina Janelle, he's just going to freak out because Cody loves a road trip. And when he sees, and he doesn't like the two of them together at all. He doesn't like them talking. He doesn't like them getting together. But now they're going to road trip together. He's going to blow his mind. They have a whole discussion about a spiritual divorce. When you divorce, when you're not divorced, how's this work? We haven't been in the church. Nobody in the family attends church anymore. So how does spiritual divorce even work? I don't understand. This is when Janelle drops the bomb that it's been 10 months since Cody has been in her home. I didn't know at the time if that was a screwy timeline editing thing or if maybe she meant since he spent the night but later on in the interviews, Cody says, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been in 
Juno's home for 10 months. So it's been 10 months. And it does make sense because, as I said before, McKelty is clearly showing her pregnancy right now. And she was just pregnant announcing it, not showing at all, in the previous episode. Then we cut to Cody in his girly white convertible that he's been driving for a long time with his um, girly visor with his girly curls. <laughs> I don't know. He's got a feminine side that he likes to embrace. He's going to sell that car. But he talks about Brian first. He said, I have business to do with Brian. (laughs) Now we know every time he says he has business here and business there and business here, it's a bunch of BS. I don't think half of it is ever business. This is business to him. The fact he's selling a car to a friend. I sold one of my cars to my college roommate. About 10 years after we were out of college, we were still in contact with each other. We were different parts of the state, and they came up, and they visited for the weekend, and they drove home, and they they took the car with them. I did business. (laughs) It's all business. No, I didn't do business. I sold a car to a friend. It wasn't business, Cody. That's not business. Okay, we're on to you now. You just revealed yourself. Anytime you have any kind of interaction, maybe because you never get together with anybody ever, so that when you do have an interaction with somebody, it's considered business. You know, now that I think about it, do you remember It's Also Brava? How we sat down and said, okay, so we're going to discuss business. And Christine's like, no, we're discussing the family and truly your daughter. (laughs) To him, it's all business. Everything is business. I just realized that. Yeah. So we're on to you now, Cody. Mm-hmm. We know. Every time you say business, it's bullshit. You're lying again. <sighs> so this Brian dude is the one that during COVID, when nobody could go anywhere, no one could see anyone, where he didn't even want Isabel um, to go to New York. And then when she was going to go, he asked Christine, can she just go by herself? This girl who's... <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the kicker. This girl's going to have major back surgery. They're going to open up her whole back, fuse the spine, put all these screws in it, straighten it out. Major, major back surgery in New York. And he thought maybe, she, can we just send her by herself? Do you have to go with her? Because of COVID. Cut to Cody takes off, does this road trip that he enjoys to Oklahoma to be the officiant of his friend Brian's wedding. He's dancing on the dance floor with everybody. He's interacting with everyone. Not a mask to be seen the entire episode. Oh, my blood is starting to boil. I can feel it. Okay. Then he gets all smiley and giggly, which is kind of creepy weird. And he's talking to the interviewer as if he's talking to, like, one of his children when they were three years old. And he's like, hey, oh, I'm so, we're having this car and we're going to get a trailer and put it in. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, I'm going to be so sad to see my car go. And does a pretend wiping of his tear. Again, like he's speaking to a two-year-old. I, I can't, there's no authenticity in this man. We have anger and we have acting. And there's nothing in between. And maybe there's not a whole lot going on in there. I don't know. But I think there's not a whole lot going on emotionally. I don't think he's in connection with his emotions at all. The only thing he's in connection with is his lust and desires. And he has a lustful relationship with Robin. That goes back to a Mormonism live video. But I haven't even gotten that out yet. So it's coming. So he does this whole acting thing, and he goes on and on and talks about how sad, how sad, how sad he is that this car is going to go. And, of course, he adds that he fell in love with this car, and Robin says she fell in love with the car, and he's so sad to see the car go. We have seen none of this emotion when any of his children have left. His reaction to getting his children to leave is, bye-bye. That's what he said, verbatim. But his car, I mean. He has a stronger emotional attachment to his car than he does his own children. Well, his children, not of Robin, anyway. In the interview, he says, When you're going through a hard experience, the presence of other men who respect and love you... 
respect and love again. Um, help endure that experience. It also takes a focus off of everything going on with the family. Those struggles when him and I are focused on accomplishing something. Okay, it's he and I, not him and I. Or better yet, just use we. Him and I, inappropriate grammar. Sorry, sorry, Cody, just had to let you know. All right, so Cody is saying that when there's a lot of things going on in his life, it's great to have a dude around that you can do something with so that you can focus on something else. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, call me crazy, but I try to deal with situations now. I try to solve problems, and I work through things, and I get over it. And I move on. And that's what grown-ups do in life. He says, it's a help to move me away from what is hard about my life in other ways. Well, he basically just comes right out and says, I can't handle anything, so I need to distract myself. So I need other things to keep my mind occupied because all this trauma and that that I've created and that I've stirred up, I can't deal with. I can't solve it. I can't work on it. I don't know where to begin. So I'm just pretending like it doesn't exist and I'm focusing on selling a car. They never measured the trailer. They never measured the car. I'm sure the guy who came all the way from Oklahoma assumed that the trailer that Cody had would fit the car. That's their trailer. It's a trailer they used to move a whole bunch of stuff. The poor guy came all the way from Oklahoma and is not taking the car back because he was buying the trailer, the car, and I think also a pickup. Oh, yeah, the pickup. Yeah, he was buying the pickup, the trailer, and the car. So the pickup was going to pull the trailer, and then he, um, the car was going to be in the trailer, and he was going to buy all those from Cody. We got... Uh, uh, there's nothing to be done here. Cody's driving the car into the trailer, and they kept going two more inches, three more inches, two more inches, a little bit more, slightly to the right, to the left, get it in there, and it absolutely did not fit. And Cody said, we need three more inches. Hmm. That's what she said. <laughs> Brian, being gracious, says, well, next trip. And then Cody goes, next trip, man. <laughs> Maybe I'll make a note to splice and put that in here. No, that's not going to do it. Okay, next, shoot, next, next trip. Next trip, man. It made me laugh out loud when he said it. <laughs> next trip, man. You're so cool, Cody. So cool. You just man and dudes when he talks to guys. But I'm not such a man. Ick. And then we have pearls of wisdom. Ah, like Confucius coming down and speaking to us. This is what Cody said. I spent my life trying to put square pegs into round holes. I had to learn through my experiences in plural marriage that the square peg is not a good idea to pound into the round hole. I just want to say, my kids had those toys when they were young, about 18 months old, when you have the round and you have the brown, the ball, it's the Tupperware, and you stick it in, and then you have, actually, they also learned that the hexagon had to go in the hexagon spot, and the pentagon had to go on the one with five sides, like, they even learned more than square peg does not fit in round hole. They were about 18 months old. But according to Cody, he had to be in his 40s and go through plural marriage to learn that you shouldn't try to pound square pegs into round holes. Oh gosh, I spent most of my life yeah. as this polygamist trying to constantly fit um, square pegs into round holes. I forced things to fit rather than going, is this a fit? I've had to learn through my experiences in plural marriage that the square peg is not a good idea to f pound into the round hole. Maybe we should just be grateful that he's learning. So in the car ride, the road trip with Janelle and Christine, we see Janelle 
admit it's over. Now, we've heard this in the past couple episodes, in her confessionals anyway. She's basically said, it's over. I don't see us ever getting back together. It's over. I don't want them together. And we've seen Cody in his confessional say, I keep trying to get back together with her and go over and she just keeps shooting me down and saying no 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 now we're at like 10 months later after that so 10 months after that in this confessional now this is what Cody's saying quote I feel like in the past 10 months Janelle has made it difficult for me to feel like I'm married to her anymore she's constantly gone and I don't think we can reconcile if we just really analyze these words this is what Cody is doing he's blaming Janelle now He spent all this time trying to reconcile with her and her money, and it's not working out anymore. So he says, you know what? Janelle's been gone so much that I don't think I can reconcile with her anymore. It's her fault. His ego is so big, and he's so fragile and can't handle the fact he's going to be dumped again, twice, on national television that he's trying to set up the story and twist it now and say you know what she hasn't been around I just don't think I don't see how this is gonna work it's her fault if she would have been around we would have made this work but she's always gone and then in the interview he says he doesn't disagree he says that Janelle has said that she doesn't want to reconcile and he says he doesn't disagree with her but he says are we just giving up too easy Yeah, Cody, you're giving up too easy. You just spent years not talking to any of Janelle's kids, not going over to her house. Years of neglect and ostracizing her children. You're giving up too easily. (laughs) As if this is something that just happened this past weekend. And they decided to call it quits. And he's like, "Uh, is is this too easy? Maybe we should give it another go. Janelle's given it a go, a go, a go, a go, a go, and she's been so passive for so many years. She's done. Nobody's given up too easily. You're gone, Cody. Bye-bye. In the car ride, we hear Janelle, I think it was in the car ride, or maybe it was in the confessional, but around there, Janelle has said that Savannah has now not heard from her father from over a month. I'm pretty sure it was in the car. I think she was saying this to Christine. It's been over a month. So last video, I thought, okay, he goes twice a month. Not great at all, but at least twice a month, he goes to see Savannah and he takes her out for dinner, which is what my second video is going to be about. That was the whole topic that I can't believe that I skipped, but I'm going to make that one this week at some point. Nevertheless, He has now moved that from twice a month to it's been over a month and he hasn't been by. He can't do it. He can't. He can't do what he doesn't want to do and he doesn't want to spend time with his adult children. End of story. Cody does what Cody wants to do. Cody doesn't want to spend time with Savannah. I think that that two times a month was just to try to get in Janelle's good graces. And now that he's realizing... Janelle's not coming around. I think she's gone. He's cutting Savannah off too. And Cody does say, "Uh, I haven't been in Janelle's house in 10 months. So this was the confirmation. And he goes, but that doesn't mean I haven't been around. What? What? I don't understand. What does that mean? You know, if he did anything of significance, he would come out and say what he's done. Janelle has said hasn't been around in 10 months. He says he hasn't been in her house in 10 months, but doesn't mean he hasn't been. Yeah, he's around. He lives in the same city. Of course he's around. What are you talking about, Cody? This is that word stuff that he does. He is not lying. He's been around. He's been in Flagstaff. But it's been 10 months since he's seen Janelle or been over to her place. But he's been around. Sure he's been around. He hasn't left the state. (laughs) He hasn't hasn't sold his house and moved somewhere else. He's around. It's the most ridiculous thing. He says things to make himself look good, and then you sit and analyze it and go, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. You just made yourself look like more of an idiot. We have Janelle talking about not wanting to date, that she's very happy being single, likes to get up when she wants to get up, go to sleep when she wants to go to sleep, just read a book, be alone. She's really enjoying her solitude now and not having Cody stop by. 
but she's not interested in jumping into another marriage. Okay, that's fine. Um, she talks about when she first met Cody that there was a spark when she first saw him and that there was some flirting going on back and forth. Christine has also said she has no regrets for marrying Cody. And I there's part of me that doesn't believe that at all, but the other part of me says they have all these children. And of course, you're never going to regret the children. So maybe that's where she's coming from. But Christine lived a life of misery with Cody. So to have no regrets of marrying him, I'm thinking she's just thinking of the children. She must be. When Cody was asked if he was flirty with Janelle, because uh, Janelle said that they kind of flirt. She didn't say they flirted back and forth. Janelle said that Cody kept joking with her about want joining the family like you should join our family too you know why don't you come join our family you should be a part of our family so that kind of flirting and Cody says I remember talking to her a lot was that flirting well if we were both smiling at each other it must have been and then he does this awkward smile again at the end I'm moving on I will say that at the end of all of this, not regretting things and reminiscing and all that stuff, we do cut to an interview with Janelle where she overtly comes out and says, I'm not interested in reconciling with Cody at all. Period. Ah! One, two, three, five. Thank you, Jesus. There's a little bit of juicy stuff that happens on their um, talk, too, because Christine says that, I don't know what precipitated this, because obviously they drove many hours across many states, and it's been edited. But um, at this point, they talk. They cut to Christine saying that when Robin came into the family, traditions stopped and that they had a lot of traditions they had something called the magical four days of feasting before thanksgiving i mean i love that tradition <laughs> the magical four days of feasting before thanksgiving i have never heard of such a thing but i'm on board you can make it seven days if you want i'll be there this is my problem <laughs> seafood eat food christine said they also had a tradition of always having friday night dinners and then they also had a tradition of every Saturday doing something together as a whole family. And those traditions ended when Robin came into the family. But now we cut to an interview with Cody, and this is Cody's take on it. He says, Robin always supported our traditions. In fact, she enhanced our traditions, end quote. Huge disconnect here. I don't know. Doesn't sound like she supported their traditions. Their tradition was also that they celebrated Passover and not Easter. So she said, fine, I'm out of here. I'm going to my mom's house. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll do Easter again. I mean, it was a good thing that came out of it, but that wasn't her supporting their traditions. And then according to this, she also wasn't part of the whole family getting together on Saturdays, and she wasn't supportive of Friday night dinners with everybody. She was alone at her own house, and Cody went there. She ended all these traditions, and she ended four days of feasting. She's the devil. Janelle repeats something she said before in previous episodes and previous interviews, which is that one of the things a plural husband has to do is grow beyond himself. For a long time, Cody tried. He tried. He tried hard. God, I love myself. And by grow beyond themselves, I think that just means become selfless push down the ego put yourself rise up your wife happy wife happy life but he never learned that I thought it was really sweet when Christine in her interview was talking about when she announced to the family that she wasn't going to be part of them anymore and Christine was crying at the time that she was leaving and she wasn't going to be part of this and that Janelle was very heartbroken and Janelle said, what about my kids? And she said that Janelle made an obvious, definite choice that despite what she was feeling about herself and her kids, that she was going to support Christine. And I thought that was beautiful. What's the end result of that selflessness of Janelle in saying, I see you, I hear you, I support you? They are now best of friends and all their kids are still together so it's better than Janelle could have even imagined 
because Janelle does know how to be selfless. Janelle does know how to put somebody above yourself. Janelle in her interview says that the people she would miss if she wasn't in the family are Christine and her kids. And she goes on to say, not Cody, not Robin, not Mary. She makes, very interestingly, an omission here and doesn't say anything about Robin's kids. And I think that's because Janelle has a soft and tender heart and she doesn't want to hurt anybody and I appreciate that. But she doesn't say she would like to still be in contact with Christine and her kids and Robin's kids. She just leaves Robin's kids out of it altogether because I believe Robin's kids would fall under the umbrella with Cody, Mary, and Robin. So she wasn't close with her kids, and she admitted that in previous series where she's like, well, Robin's kids were so much younger. My kids were grown, especially the youngest ones. And Janelle is not like Christine where she's just like, oh, come here, loves, hugs, kisses, and all that stuff. Janelle is much more of a practical-minded person. And so bless her heart for not mentioning that she doesn't care if she would see Robin's kids ever again. But there's a subtext. I can read between the lines. Christine <laughs> Christine is milking, either milking a spinoff or working to keep in the Sister Wives series because she comes right out and says, we're Sister Wives because we're the only family that survived. I hear spinoff. Or maybe just the Janelle and Christine show under Sister Wives. And she goes on to specify Cody is living monogamy. Oh, Cody would not fit under the sister wives umbrella. He's living monogamy. There's no sister wives involved anymore. Mary has flown the coop too. We know that now. We'll learn that in a future episode. Look at Christine working it. I'm all for it. I'm all for it because I would watch it. I think it would be fascinating. As long as we don't have like these fake just dinners together and we listen to McKelty talk about how great she is and point out everyone else's errors in their personalities. Not really excited about that, but then, then again, maybe it'll make for good TV and good commentating. I don't know. But I love it when Janelle's and Christine's kids all get together. I just, I love that. Happy, happy, happy. This road trip that Christine and Janelle are taking are to go to Idaho to see Christine's brothers. One is a brother by her mother and one is a brother by another mother. They're Levi and Steve. Okay, Steve is um, the same mom as Christine's mom. And let me just say that um, Steve reminds me a lot of Peyton. And I can now see, I mean you see a family picture, they're all like the same height and then there's Peyton who's <laughs> like two feet taller than everybody. Cody's very short and his wives are all short and all of his kids are short except for Peyton and then we see Christine's brother very tall that's where the genes come from obviously it was Christine's side of the family I just assume Christine's father was maybe tall and maybe he was but her her brother's very tall too and really does resemble yada 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 I'm gonna flip through this quickly they ride ATVs they have a lot of fun Janelle seems to be having the time of her life Christine talks about how she's been in polygamy since the age of five again making the perfect person to put on a sister wife show because she knows polygamy and um, and as Christine has said in the past I don't think Robin has ever lived polygamy which is so true and we discussed this in another video I don't remember which one but watch them all <laughs> and like and subscribe thanks Christine goes on to say that when they were all first married, they were living in this mobile home, which we knew from the book, but like just hearing her say it again and point it out um, makes you realize, wow, who, who is Cody that he kept taking on wives when he didn't have the means to support any of them? So they were in a three-bedroom mobile home. And I was thinking before they even said it, well, no wonder there's all these problems and jealousies and all that. A mobile home? Have you ever been in a mobile home? The walls are made out of, like, plywood. You can, like, bend them by <laughs> pushing them. And your husband is sleeping in bed with another wife? That, I mean, it's going to keep you up all night, right? Sure enough, they say, the one person said, I don't remember who it was, 
the probably Janelle they were thin paper walls and then I think it was Christine who said tissue paper walls yeah and then Christine just ends it with it was a miserable life she said she wanted to be a sister wife ever since she was a teenager so she got what she wanted but in the end it was a miserable life I, I think that the grandiose idea of it all came crumbling down inside of that mobile home and clearly Cody didn't do a good job of seeing to it that the other two wives would go to dinner together to bond and become good friends while he was intimate with one no they had paper thin walls and Cody just went at it it's wrong and gross I feel like I'm gonna barf so then they're talking about marriage and and with the two brothers who don't live polygamy um, and they're talking about what it was like growing up. Christine had a very different experience from the from her brothers. Her brothers were a lot older. The brothers recall the two wives not getting along that much. Christine didn't remember that. She was younger, so she just remembered it being great, a household full of lots of kids, and she, she loved both of the moms, so that's why she wanted to become a polygamist. Janelle says when they talk about the difficulties of polygamy, she said that she thinks a solution to polygamy is that you should make all marriages within the polygamist um, marriage family legal. So not just the first wife is legal, but they're all legal. And then that way, when one gets divorced, they can take part of his assets. So right here, Janelle just came out and basically said, I'm not getting anything of Cody's assets I'm just leaving with what's mine and I don't have much that's mine because my name is on parcels of land with everybody else and uh, Janelle seems shocked by saying you know in theory a man can ghost a wife and just leave her with nothing and I'm thinking yeah Cody did that he ghosted Mary but somehow that man has got the best of both worlds because he ghosted somebody, but he's still getting her money. How does he do it? Let me show you a quick clip here of what Christine has to say about it. Do you know what she's talking about here? And what she's hinting at here? Basically, what Janelle is saying is, if I would have had a legal marriage with Cody, and if she would have had a legal marriage with Cody and Mary too, that when it came down to leave, it'd be also a legal divorce, which would mean it would be a 50-50 split of everything. Janelle says, if we were all legally married, the assets would be divided equally and everything would be a, le a level playing field. Again, making it clear, that's not what has happened in their family, which is sickening. Which is true. Cody's sitting on a million dollar house. And Cody goes on to say, my whole goal is to have the wives each have their own assets. Janelle and Mary and Robin and I each own 25% of Coyote Pass. Yeah, but what about everything else? What about all the cars? What about all the jewelry? What about all the art? What about the million dollar mansion on the hill? That's all in Robin's name, even though Robin didn't bring a dime into the family. Or Cody and Robin's name. And Mary and Christine and Janelle have no claim to that. So this is where we cut to. This is going to be the best season ever. If next season is all about the three of them legally getting counsel and going to court to fight for a quarter of everything. Well, I guess it would be a fifth because Cody gets to keep a fifth as well. But I love that we are now starting to get into the financials. And I hope that they start getting a little bit of loose lips and TLC starts letting them liquor up a little bit. Mary, Mary, she's our drinker. <laughs> Hopefully they let her have her sipper a good hour or two beforehand and keep it filled up so that we can get the truth. The truth bombs will start to come out and we can learn how much money there was, where the money all went, and what's going on with it now, and how much these wives are getting as they leave. I would just love to know the deets. Please, I'm begging. Is that wrong of me? I hope not. If it's wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> okay, you have a great day. Hopefully I can get another video about Mormonism live podcast this week. That's my hope. I don't know. I've been gone for five days with my other job out of town, so I haven't been able to do videos, and I've got some catch-up stuff to do because of that. So maybe this week um, I'll do one of those. Keep your eye out. Like, subscribe, shoot me a comment. I love it when you do. 
Let me know anything I got right. Let me know anything I got wrong. Let me know anything you want to just comment about. I appreciate you, and I will see you next time on Senior Perspective.